Welcome to Sunday's report with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. I love stocks. Today's date, February the 23rd, 2020. And today's picks we're going to look over is going to be PAVM, SPCE is in space, Lake, APT, and MYO. And Miss Vegas, good morning. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Hope you've been having a really good weekend. And before we get started, just a quick update on the market. I mean, I uh, just wanted to quickly just touch upon the coronavirus. We can see that in Northern Italy, the city of Friuli Venezia, uh, Giulia, has declared a state of emergency mentioned yesterday in the media due to the coronavirus. There were apparently three doctors and eight patients in isolation. And Italy was putting areas with outbreaks of the coronavirus on a lockdown, according to the Prime Minister. Um, Italy's Lombardy region, which includes the city of Milan, has banned public events to stop the spread of the coronavirus. And so we actually can see also that Turkey has closed the borders with Iran due to the coronavirus outbreak. And that was mentioned on uh, CNN Turkey edition. And more than 600 coronavirus cases in South Korea from President Moon Jae in empowerment and empowered the government to lock down cities and limit the travel according to the New York Times. So, you know, just to mention that obviously uh, the coronavirus is still a hot topic. And uh, as a result, we've included a couple corona plays that we will cover momentarily. So let's start with PAVM. So PAVMED, as you know, uh, PavMed is a company that has multi-product medical device company. Uh, they actually had some news. You know, we talked about the stock last Sunday. And when we talked about it last Sunday, you know, we did mention that, you know, keep this on watch for continuation. Really like the weekly chart. A lot of people I know have had the stock for quite a while. And they're actually holding it longer term. I mean, if you go all the way back to you know, back to December days of 2019, which sounds like not that long ago, um, the stock was holding quite well and it was very cheap at that time. And we can see from last Sunday to now, the stocks had a very nice move and we are anticipating a continuation. Now they did have news last week as well that they are introducing the ESO Cure, which is the disposable single use thermal balloon catheter and it's basically a product that goes through, it's a standard endoscope that allows the clinician to treat dysplastic Barrett's esophagus. So that's called, the condition's called BE. And, you know, a lot of people can have what's called esophageal cancer. And so without the need for complex, expensive capital equipment, I mean, this product is a great introduction into the market so this will allow them to use this and actually it's disposable so this is really great um, so they're adding this so cure product to their expanding of commercial product pipeline which was mentioned by Li Shan Aklog who's as you know PavMed's chairman and CEO so this is a major addition to their product portfolio there is a substantial market opportunity and a strong synergy to Lucid's ESO Guard and ESO Check products. I think once it's commercialized, both PavMed and Lucid will be able to offer not only the comprehensive panel of products, which are capable of treating conditions across the spectrum from their Barrett's esophagus to the esophageal cancer. So they hope to have this development completed and submission of the SO Cure by early 2021 or sooner. So this is a company that, in my opinion, longer term hold as well would be something to obviously do your own due diligence on. But this company has so much going on and there's such they have so many things in the pipeline, very diversified products. They have a broad amount of products in the uh, clinical areas. And they have a lot of technologies uh, that are dealing with, you know, carpal tunnel, vascular access, uh, pediatric ear infections, and medical infusions. So this company is developing so many things. And I think this is something that uh, longer term, you know, could be something a lot of you may be interested to hold. Because I think there's going to be a lot of growth with this company. 
who knows if down the road this could be a future merger acquisition or you know what more partnerships could come and you know this company is located in new york right right at one grand central place so uh great story great company in my opinion uh one to definitely watch and keep and keep a close eye on and maybe you know if there's any pullback opportunities if you're not in this trade and or thinking about it for a longer term hold you know maybe wait for this to pull back and then you know to start taking a starter position and you know if you like the stock and if you like your own due diligence that you should be doing <laughs> so jim over to you to talk about this chart because i really like the action that we've been seeing hasn't exploded just yet but it's moving at a very nice pace i don't know about an explosion we down here at 81 and then we had that pennant flag here at 140 about oh six seven days ago so yeah we've we've had a pretty good explosion from 140 all the way up to around 314. now what we're looking at if this is on the yearly chart as you can see so we're going to pull up the, the pull up the 20 day and on even on the 20 day about 10 days ago we were down here at 140 and we last week we called this out on last sunday and we had it was down here at 188. Well, after that ascending triangle breakout that I pointed out last Sunday, we had a huge breakout on Monday, and she ran all the way to 249, kind of consolidated, but a beautiful run all day long. And then the next day she came out again and had an engulfing candle and created a resistance at 307. And so I've got a resistance now at 308. And last week I called this out in the room. I said, we're setting up for an ascending triangle on Friday. And we started breaking out from that ascending triangle. So yeah, this has had a real beautiful run from two ascending triangles. One was the breakout here at 154. And she ran in five days all the way up to 303. And then last week on Tuesday, she pulled back a little bit and then started creating an ascending front triangle on the 20 day here. Actually, it's a better look on the five day, five minute. So yeah, this is a, just a beautiful setup for a breakout and right when I called it I said we're getting ready to squeeze and I timed it within a minute and a half I said we're going to break out and then right into close we had a high up to right around the 314 area and then into after hours she created new highs around 319 so I'm very bullish on this trade uh, low support if it does decide to pull back which I can't see it doing it might just continue with this trend line right here to the ascending triangle so we'll expose that turn that on and that right now is leading up to that first support area and that first support is going to be right here at 289 so let's mark that into a red line pay real attention real good attention to this next week because I think we can have another good breakout another week-long breakout on it and we might get up to higher highs but that first support level is going to be 289 the second one's going to be right here at 272 and then low support I don't want to see it break trend but it can on that first day maybe and start creating a new ascending triangle but we need to break the and that's going to be at 249 that's going to be your low 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 strong buy that was the old ascending triangle breakout that we had on um, Monday so if we can break that and we can break up the 307 your first support is going to be that 289 and the resistance that we need to break is going to be that 319 and I wish you very good luck on this trade PAVM really bullish on it sending trying I mean it's a beautiful chart this is probably one of the prettiest charts I've seen in a while as in consolidation and we had a triple top breakout last week so yeah I'm still bullish on it and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be a very popular I did some videos on it and I've called it a bullish bear trade of the year and that's going to be space SPCE okay well space was just Virgin Galactic Holdings uh, last week had a very nice run I mean it ran uh, you know all the way from the open on Monday $32.17 had a high of day on uh, Thursday all the way to $42.49 I mean this had a really nice short squeeze there and there's a lot of shorts on this one too I mean, if you look at the volume on Thursday and also on Tuesday, I mean, Thursday alone was the highest I've seen in a long time. Over 135 million shares traded. So, I mean, that is just massive, massive trading happening there. Um, so definitely keep this on watch. It still has a lot of shorts in here. 
It has pulled back, you know, it closed to 33.87, so it's down practically $10 a share from Thursday's high. So, you know, definitely let's hear what Jim has to say about this chart because this could be an opportunity uh, for a reversal and maybe have another short squeeze. So Jim, let's hear about these uh, Virgin Galactic Holdings. And by the way, has earnings this week, earnings report. So I don't think we'll see earnings, but uh, we'll see what they're gonna say at the earnings call. So Jim, let's hear about this uh, SPCE. Yeah, this is a speculate, speculative trade. It's not, it's more of a technical trade for right now, but uh, earnings is, is going to be, they're going to tell you they probably sold 600 tickets or more, and and they're going to just going to talk about the future guidance of when they're probably going to start shipping it up to space and stuff. So it's not going to be a real good earnings report, but it, it's going to be one that that is going to be hot for this coming year. Maybe if we can still keep the momentum up with it. And I know that there's a lot of bulls still holding this long, and I know that there's some bears trading it too that are still bullish on the trade itself, but they're just going to take advantage of the uh, pullback on it. And that's kind of what they did on, on Thursday and Friday. We did hit a high up there, a double top. It just couldn't break it. It created a lower high, so it pulled back. But a lot of traders were expecting it to get down to 30, and it just didn't do that. It kind of held its own. Um, there wasn't really you know i was i was watching the tape all day and it was just little bitty pullbacks as you can see we do have a descending pattern and it kind of pulled right back here to a support level and i'm going to put that right there right around the 3310 mark that's going to be probably our first little support level and we do have a couple real low supports on this thing if it decides to pull back i know some of the uh, bears were looking for 28 on it Friday and just didn't get down there. They wanted it to get down to 30 and it couldn't even do that. And that's where I have a trend line at is at $30. The next one's going to be right here where it consolidated right here, right around the 26, I'm going to say 2680. So that would be a real strong buy off that 200 on a 20 day, one hour chart at 2737. So we have three low supports. If it does decide to pull back, I think, you know, I'm like I said, this is a bullish, bearish trade right now. You just kind of have to follow the trend, and the trend will tell you which way to play it. We've had a wonderful run, though, from this 20-day down here at this 200 here back on uh, um, 127, where it was at 1551, all the way up to 4249. This is probably one of the most popular stocks that have been talked about on in social media. So if we can go up... Your first resistance is going to be a hard resistance, and that's going to be there at 35.65. Then your second one's going to be that 37.66, and then they just keep going on up. And you can stop this video at any time. Right now we're at 33.22 after hours. The pullback could be right to 30 bucks, and you might see a reversal off that 30 back up to that 33.10 to resistance. Every resistance that I break becomes a support. So always remember that we've got three supports that carry on down that. Some have a target here right around the 28 area. And I'm going to go ahead and draw me a little trend line right there. You can see we had that engulfing candle into close. And then she had another little breakout up into the highs after hours. So those are going to be my support levels. We'll stop here right at the pivot point so far. And I think that could be a beginning of a channel at 33.10 with your first support right around 30. Your second one at 28.65 and 26.80. And if we can keep it above that 200, we'll be doing good. If not, it'll pull back to these other two real low supports. And these are going to be real strong buys. Now, this is space. Remember, this is a bullish, bearish trade on technicals. Not really much as fundamentals, but it uh, it is one that's kind of like Tesla in a way. It's, uh, um, what do you call Miss Vegas, uh, in innovative you know, it has. It, it, yeah, it's very. I mean, it has a lot of innovation. I mean, people just like really the story about space and 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 what it can, what it has, what the future can hold. Yeah. And this is why there's probably a lot of hype, you know, on this right now. Um, and also there's a lot of you know analysts talking about it too, and so it has a lot of social media exposure. So it's getting people excited. Yeah. Think about the opportunity that the stock. I mean, like you said, you know, the stock was 
under, you know, under 10 bucks. Yeah. So look where it is now. I yeah. mean, I remember when it was like, I recall this back in December, $7. Yep. We were buying contracts for $10 strike for yep. January. Yep. Yeah, sure was. Well, man, I wish I'd have held that stronger. I could have really made some fairly good money on that. Now, this next some next few we're going to talk about is going to deal with the coronavirus. This is a John Hopkins case study right here that says there's been 78,000, almost 79,000 confirmed with total deaths of 2,466 with a total recovery rate of 23,386. And always remember, I don't think we're being told everything that we need to know but the next one we're going to talk about is going to be lake miss okay, vegas so lake is lake land and we've talked about this one too and i'm bringing it up again because of the corona late the, the news you know in the last 48 hours really about what's happening in italy and what's happening also with the um with the borders being closed uh as well between turkey and iran so turkey closed their border they just don't want the virus coming through. So, um, you know, countries are just, you know, protecting themselves. So, you know, Lake, which is called Lake Land, uh, the actual company, as you know, has the, they make the mask, they make the clothing, they make rainwear, they make protective clothing, hand and arm protection. I mean, they have like a vast amount of products, but this is one of the ones, one of my favorite ones, when the Corona virus is highly talked about, this happens to be one of those stocks that really moves really fast and a lot of volatility. So you have to be careful when you trade this one because, you know, you can go from, let's say, $12 and run up almost to 14 you know, within a couple days or sometimes, you know, it'll run and then pull back and then you'll feel like, why did I buy this stock? So you have to be cautious how you play this. It has a lot of volatility in the name in general. Um, but you know what, keep us on watch because this is also one of those stocks that at one point, you know, was around uh, nine, ten dollars and uh, has had uh, quite the activity here uh, in the last little while. So, you know, again, because of what's happened in the media with the comments, you know, we could probably see some action on this tomorrow. And there was a lot of volume also on Friday, over 650,000 shares traded which was the highest volume of the day so it could also be a lot of people bought stock on friday you know swinging it into the weekend because you know they kept hearing that the coronavirus is still big news and so you know could there be some action you know tomorrow i think this will have a volume surge tomorrow as well um that's just my thoughts but jim let's hear your thoughts on those charts with lake you can tell when stock broke out we had a little breakout back here on uh on 121.20, about the time the coronavirus started getting to be known in the news, we broke resistance of 1289. So that now becomes a solid support level for any low 1289. And we did pull back below that last week and created a support right around the $12 area. So we're going to draw a red line on that $12. And that's where we had this previous peak up here between 12. 1216 so let's make that into a red line so that'll be a solid strong buy in that area and we're going to kind of just go ahead and draw a little well we'll bring it up to the 20 day now kind of get a clue here we're going to fill this little channel in oh there we go kind of right down here between 12 and 1216 that's going to be kind of your first little low support your second channel of support is going to be this 1274 to 1289. And actually, your first support is going to be right here at 1321. Now, I'm going to pull up the five day and show you what the five day looks. I noticed something kind of nice on the five day is this little trend line. We're going to draw a trend line all the way up for a support area off the bottom that we had down here at 11, well, not 1180, but right in here right around that $12 area. We're gonna draw a trend line all the way up to here. So that 1350 looks like a pretty good little support level. As you see, we did have a resistance right here. It pulled back, hit that 34, and ran up and created a new high on Friday at 1389. So that's gonna be our resistance to, re resistance to break. Let's make that 1389 
strong resistance and let's make this $13 area right here where that trend line is 1349 somewhere a solid support level so our first support is going to be right here at 1349 then we have a, a 12 a 1321 you could probably bring it down to around 1314 right there so that's going to be your your solid first well you know the pivot point at 1349 we need to hold the support area is going to be between 1314 1321 the second one's going to be down here at 1274 1289 and then we got this other down here at 1216 to twelve dollars and then the resistance that we're going to have to look at to break and we'll pull up the 20 day on that again and that's going to be this next channel up here at 1376 to 1389 with a long target of 1448 if we can break that hard resistance right there at 1448 we can go up to these three new highs it depends on how how it gets picked up but this is you know this is a strong stock i like it a lot and that's lake low support no lower than 12 resistance to break is going to be at 1389 to a strong resistance at 1448 and the next one we're going to talk about goes along with the lake and it's about uh, protection apparel too and that's apt yes so you know alpha protect uh apt you know they also had over 10.4 million dollar of orders for their face masks regarding the corona virus so that had, they got an order 10 days ago. So uh, that was a press release sent out. So won't be surprised to see more orders. Uh, apparently they have uh, over 30% of uh, booked orders for the first quarter of 2020. So this is amazing. I mean, they're going to have a lot of probably revenue growth after the first quarter, after these orders are actually shipped. Um, so apparently this outpouring of the mask has been very demanding. They have said it's very unprecedented, the demand for the face mask. And, to, and, you know, their goal is to obviously aid the communities around the world because it is an ongoing health care crisis. So, um, you know, this is one to watch as well. Uh, the, the order they got was for $10.4 million. That's a lot of money for a, ma for a whole bunch of masks. I mean... That is just great, great big order. So keep a watch on this stock because you know it previously ran towards that uh, eight dollar mark, and uh, didn't quite hit that eight dollars from what I could see here on uh, APT. Let me just see here. I think it ran there at one time or close to it. Um, but keep a watch on this one too because it is one of those stocks that you know because of the price point probably or because they're still in the, in the masks, uh, similar to Lake. Um, you know, people like to trade this stock when the Corona stocks are basically, you know, active because of what's going on in social media commentary. So, you know, keep APT on watch. I do like the weekly chart very much. Um, I did see here on the weekly chart um, that it did have a nice pocket pivot. The Bollinger Bands were wide. So it does show me, you know, when the bands are wide, it, you can, it's showing me that there is volatility in the stock and definitely looks bullish we have support at the 20 day moving average as well um, so we can expect this to have a continuation uh, on the stock you can see also the volume in general is not that big um, but uh, on friday if you similar to lake i mean thursday was a much bigger volume day um, the stock had about seventy five thousand. so it is kind of you know in my opinion uh hold on a second i think i have the wrong uh, chart here oh yeah so you can see friday sorry i was looking at ap instead of apt but this one here had uh apt over three million shares traded uh on friday so you know a lot of people i'm thinking for sure swing traded this stock because if you look at the weekly chart it's got a very nice setup so i'd like to see this break six dollars and then break the previous resistance that i saw there at six dollars and ninety cents and then if we can break the six and six ninety I mean, I'd love to see this go to even $8. So let's hear what uh, Washboard Jim, the chartist, has to say about APT, because it's not your apartment, but it is certainly the uh, Alpha Protect. Let's hear about Alpha Pro. Yeah, we need all the protection we can get. Um, 
I own a janitorial service, so I'm I'm putting on hazmat suits more or less when I clean every day, just to never take that chance. But here we are at 320. We got a low down here right at 320 for the year, and we had to have a resistance to break right around, you know, more or less most of the year was at 380. But we have had something interesting that's happened in the past five days, and it kind of noteworthy. First, I'm going to pull up the 20. We did have a yearly high of 786. So we go straight to the 20 day one hour. Does anybody see a pattern on this out there? In, I'm going to go ahead and draw it up for you. We're going to go ahead and show you what a descending pattern is. It did kind of pull back all year, all week. Whoops. Got to bring that back to the full diagram. But I'm going to put a little line right here at the 863 level where we had the high on Monday last. Oh, what day was that? That was on the, uh, on, where's my day? I can't find it up there. Hmm. Well, we'll go ahead and pull it on back. But we've had them previous highs right here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw it to that wick right there at 393. And then we had the flat bottom support up here at 482, 483. So that's going to be a solid support. We'll call that number three. And we're going to go ahead and draw that in a red line so I can remember that on Monday. That's going to be your solid little support area. And that price right there is at 482. So no lower than 482. You got your second support here at 581 or 531. And then you got 573 with a resistance to break here at 610. If we can break past that 610 level. We've got a couple more resistance channels, but along at 685. The 685 had an ascending triangle. As you can see, the lows right here, and then the higher lows, and then we had this flat line here with a triple top breakout at 685. So that's going to be your hard resistance to break. I think we can do that if we can get back up there, but that's going to be a solid resistance. If it starts to fail and pull back, it could be a good place to take profit maybe get back in at a lower support level here at 633 if not she'll break that 685 and move on to to newer highs and maybe get on that 20 day double top which won't be 20 days much more but 848 is going to be our hard resistance and that's going to be the hard one to break low support down here at 482 resistance to break is going to be like i said if we can break this 573 if we can break that, we'll move up to 685, and it's going to be a nice trade. And we do have a descending pattern that looks to me like a little reversal in the last two days. And maybe this news over the weekend with some of the spread. I think some of it spread it in Japan, and, and they were talking about another place too that, that might have had more than unusual volume. So if we can break this trend line, you know, it's coming down. That's going to be like a new little sub-resistance at 593. But the strong one's going to be that 610. And that's APT. And then we've got one more for you. Don't put too much mayo on your sandwich. This is MYO. Yeah, so uh, MyOMO, you know, they're into the medical robotics. I really like uh, medical robotics company. Um, they're in Massachusetts. And uh, what they do is they offer mobility products from people that suffer with neurological disorders and also the upper limb paralysis. So they have a lot of patented technology, by the way, which was developed at MIT and also Harvard Medical School. And so they have a lot of uh, product lines um, that are also lightweight, non-invasive, and they have a powered arm brace that helps to restore function for people that have um, par uh, paralyzed or weakness in their arms and hands or you know people that have even suffered a stroke or a spinal cord or nerve injury uh they have like phenomenal phenomenal products to help you know people you know to make their try to you know put their life back in order and not make things uh, as difficult as it already is so you know i really like what this stock is doing um if you actually take a look at the chart and Jim will talk more about it momentarily, but this MYO um, definitely looks to me that it wants to have another move. Uh, it had a lot of the volatility was contracting 
It had also an inside day on Friday and it definitely looks bullish and looks like it wants to go again. So definitely keep MYO on your watch list, uh, potentially for a swing trade or day trade continuation next week. We can see here it closed around 687. Uh, the volume, you know, was around 417,000, but nevertheless, you know, we had a big volume surge actually last Wednesday. You saw the stock went all the way to 889. Uh, it's too bad it didn't break that nine. And if you actually look at the stock, um, you know, it has good volume in general. So keep this on watch because it looks like it wants to go again. So keep MYO on that watch list. Jim, let's hear about MYO. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at the history here. I was just wondering why why it was, uh, looks to me like it had an offering back. It had a reverse split, 1 to 30, back on January 31st. Yeah, and then it had a uh, offering back on the 11th for about $2 million. So I was just looking at the chart. I knew something was up there. On the split, so it's hard to tell on a yearly chart because it's kind of added in. So we'll just go straight to the 20 day and that'll be a little bit better uh, compliance. We did have a nice little run up here to right around 34 area. She did pull back probably on that offering news. And then we had that solid support down here right around the 528 level, double top 542. I'm putting in there. I need to put this trend line in here. So this is one that we need to really keep on watch. If it pops up on the scanner, find out what direction it's moving. We can take it either way. But we are at a pivot point area on a 20-day, and I'll magnify this and show you what I'm talking about. We are in between right here between the 20-day low at 528 and the resistance high of right here right around the uh, 835 area. And that's, you know, that's going to be our hard resistance to get to. This little channel is, is going to be your pivot point area. And that's going to be right here at 659 to 705. So it, support will be that 659. That's what we need to hold. If that holds, we can go up to newer highs. And we can maybe take it to that resistance level of 705 to 741. But if, when she pops up on the scanner, find out if she's red or green and take her in the right direction. This is going to be a trend play. Let's pull it just to the five-day, one-minute. Five day, five minute. See if I'm right here. Yeah, support is going to be right here, definitely at 659. And then your next support is going to be here at 619 with that low support at 542. Resistance to break 705. Bring it past 741, and we got this whole new channel to play with. And that could take you up here to 775 to maybe a weekly high of 835. And that's mail. That finishes. Is it for the market? I just want to mention too that um, this MYO, right? yeah. it's also a low float stock uh, because of that reverse split. And, you know, so it could have a lot of volatility in the stock. And also just to mention, you know, they did have that offering, but you know, the offering is now closed, which they did send a press release oh, good. Uh, last week. That's good to news. Confirm that the, yeah, so that the, the offering is now closed. And the offering originally was for $7.50 a share. So if you actually look at the price of the stock, it's under that offering price as well. So um, I think definitely this has an opportunity for some potential activity this week. So definitely keep it on watch for sure. Yeah, that bring the low floater. Yeah, that bring it to that 741 resistance, right? Pretty much at mm -hmm. 750. So that could be a good target. Well, that's it, yeah. Miss Vegas. You have anything else you'd like to mention before we close this down? Well, I'm uh, just going to mention um, that I will be doing a separate video on the options. So I will be putting out a video later today on some option ideas and also reviewing the option trades from Friday. We had a fantastic day trading options. The market was super volatile, super red, and we took advantage of the pullbacks on a lot of large cap stocks and we had a great trading day on Friday. Even though, you know, the market wasn't the best, uh, you know, people always want green, but you can still make money when it's red. So um, I will be sending out a video later today. Also, if you want to subscribe to our newsletter, please go to the website, ilovestocks.com and just enter your email and then you'll get a notification to your inbox confirming you want a subscription.
and then you can decide to accept the confirmation and uh, you'll get a newsletter as well later today so we have a lot of things uh, a couple more things uh, being uh, prepared for you guys so hope everyone has a great week in the market thank you for watching liking subscribing and we'll see you again uh, hopefully this week have a great day yeah um, I did a little bitty video on Tesla about how I traded it you know in, in, in options last week so if you want to watch that that'd be nice just as people with small accounts can scalp it I scalped it all last week four different times and did very well on it made over seven hundred dollars on them trades within within and out of ten minutes almost each trade so it's one to watch subscribe ring that bell this is our our little YouTube channel we also have a little page right here that takes you to the Twitter bird and subscribe and ring that bell we're up about 30 some last week on our on our account which is a little below average but that's pretty good and this is I love stocks always remember we love stocks